when you're playing cards, you definitely need to shuffle them, uh, for most games at least, very few games. I, I don't know any games that need a deck that's in order. So how do we shuffle? Well, here is some pseudo code, and what we're gonna do is turn this into real code. Uh, there's a brief discussion about how we normally shuffle, where we cut the deck in half and basically merge the two halves together and it mostly goes one card from one, one card from the other, one card from the first, one card from the other. Uh, that's a typical way to shuffle. Uh, a more thorough way to shuffle is throw them all on a table, spread them out, and then pick them back up. But what we're going to do is something slightly different. So we need a method called shuffle. It's going to be public and we'll drop it. I'm inside deck. All right. So this is pseudocode, so it's obviously not gonna work immediately. So what we're gonna need to do is turn this into real code. So for each index, I, sounds like a for loop. So I, int I equals, let's start it at zero. We wanna go every index, so how far should we go? What's the maximum index? You might think 52. Uh, we could try I less than 52. Uh, however, and of course we want to go plus plus I. Uh, however, the 52 is bad because not every deck's going to have 52 cards. Yeah, I know if we use this particular one right here, it's going to fill it with 52 cards. But we have a way to get how many cards. So we're going to do cards dot and look at that length boom so if we have 52 uh, spaces in our array we're going to get 52 right here however many cards we have that's the number that will go that will uh, be computed right here okay so this is a very standard for loop to loop over an array what are we going to do inside the for loop so we have some comments here we're gonna implement these. Choose a random number between i and length minus one. All right, there's a way to do it. That's the random object. So we're gonna need a random object. We're only really gonna need one for all decks. We might make two or three decks. So we only need one random object even if we make 10 decks. So I usually call it rand, that's what I've called it in the past. Uh, and it will be a new random, just like that. Of course, what's random? In NetBeans, we can automatically add the import. Um, if you're not in NetBeans, that's the code you need right there. Uh, sometimes you do dot star if you're gonna add a second thing from the Java utils. Uh, but I'm only gonna put random in here now uh, your package goes first, import second, so make sure that order is important. So if you switch them, you get an error. So package first, import second. All right, so we have this random, oh, and I wanted to make it static. The reason is, oops, I think it goes static random. Uh, and you can even make this final if you want to, because I'm not, once I create it, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna use it, but I'm not going to change it to a new object, static final. Okay, now I have the ability to generate random numbers using this object. And again, just this static means if I didn't have static here, every deck that I built would have its own random object, which you don't, you only need one random object overall. Uh, if I build 10 decks, I don't need 10 of these. Uh, however, if I build 10 decks, they're each going to have different cards in them. So it would be a really bad idea to make this static because then all 10 decks would actually have the exact same cards inside of them. They'd share this array. That's not what I want. Uh, I do want to share the random object. So now I can go a rand dot and next. And here we got some choices. Uh, I'm going to go with next int. But I'm going to use the second one here. Let's read this. Uh, pseudo random just means nothing's really random in computers. Uh, 
So it's going to be between 0, it includes 0, which is good because 0 is a valid index in our array. Now it's between 0 and the specified value. So if I would put 52 in here, it is exclusive of that value. So if I put 52 in, it would only go 0 to 51. And again, I don't want to use 52. I want to use however many cards are in the deck. So cards.length, there we go. All right, this is going to give me an integer. Let's call it R. All right, what do we want to do? So we just accomplished this first comment, choose a random number between I and length minus one. So we did it right here. Uh, however, well, that's actually not between I and length minus one. That's between zero and length minus one. We kind of have to work a little harder to get between I and length minus one. For our purposes, this will this will work. It will shuffle the deck, um, and it's okay. Well, let's be complete. Let's let's do what the instructions actually say. All right, between I and length minus one. That's a little bit more tricky. All right. So I can't just go cards.length. What I'm gonna do is something a little tricky. I'm gonna do cards.length minus i. The reason I subtract it in this order is so the number's always positive. Uh, I's ne you can see i's never gonna even equal cards.length. So when you subtract them, cards length is the big value, i is the small value. So when I make this subtraction, the first time it'll be subtracting zero. So it'll just be anywhere from zero to 51. The next time through the loop when i is 1, this will be 1 less. And so what I'm going to do to compensate, I'm going to go i plus. So think about this as the range. So it's going to go from pick a next integer from 0 to this number. But if I don't add i to it, it'll actually give me a number between 0 and what I have highlighted. I don't want a number between zero and what I have highlighted. Uh, I want a number, and maybe let's do a little bit of math here. So this will be i plus. All right, I'm gonna use some math notation. So it's gonna be cards.length minus i. So this is gonna give me a number between zero and cards.length minus i. And when I add i to it, now the smallest number that comes out of here is 0 plus i, which is i. And the biggest number that can come out of this is, zero, is i plus 1 less than that. Um, so it'll be cards.length, but minus 1. All right, so that will accomplish correctly getting this value between i and length minus 1. OK, so we have that. Now we're going to swap a card. So how do we swap a card? We're going to read down a little bit further. Uh, oops, I totally just skipped over to this uh, rand int. If I follow the low high, <laughs> that's what I get for not reading. All right, so I've already accomplished that right here. Uh, now I put it into a method that should return an int. So I'm going to return r. There we go. All right, so that should be low. Uh, Cards.length should be high. Boom. And then that should be low. OK, so I think we fixed all the problems. And now I can do int r equals random int. And then the low was i, and the high was cards.length. OK, I'm just following along with what the book has here. OK, now we're going to do a swap. And there's another method to swap right here. 
Notice that these methods are private. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second, why that's important. Uh, I don't actually believe the random it needs to be private. Um, if you notice, we can't modify anything in the class. We can't actually modify cards or rand here. We do use rand, but we don't modify it. So I could make this public if I needed to get a random integer between low and high somewhere else. Uh, oh, this says including both. Mine doesn't include the high value. I'm going to make a Java doc here. Slash star star boom. All right. Uh, mine does not include high, and I don't want it to. Okay, return integer between low and high. Okay, so this is called a Java doc. All I did to build it was just do slash star star enter, and then it will build that up. And it's actually very useful. Uh, so if I do this dot or no I don't know why that's not popping up anyways Java docs are quite useful it just formalizes your uh, documentation all right let's focus on swap cards back to this so we have two different indexes and we want to swap these two cards so you might think, oh, okay, cards i equals cards j. And then basically do the same thing, uh, j. All right, this looks good. It won't work, uh, but I want to test it and see it fail. And then we'll come back and fix it. All right, so shuffle what it's going to do. We got to swap the card right here. Swap cards now. I is one of them and the other one is J. Nope, the other one is R. It's that random value right there. So we're gonna swap cards and I think that's all we're gonna do inside shuffle. Shuffle is public so we can call it uh, from outside. Now these are private because they're what's called helper methods. They help shuffle function but you don't necessarily want to allow uh, the swapping of cards from outside of the deck. Maybe we do, maybe later we make it public, but we gotta be careful if we're gonna make it public because somebody might send in a negative integer or an integer that's like a thousand and then we're gonna have uh, index uh, out of bounds exception happening. So if we made this public, you really gotta check and make sure I and J are between zero and um, cards.length. All right, let's go ahead. So we printed the deck. I'm gonna duplicate that deck dot and you should see shuffle right here. All right, now what you're reading is in this box at the bottom is the Java doc. Uh, we haven't written it and so it's not very exciting. It's all blank. So we're gonna print the deck, shuffle, print the deck. All right, let's run this. All right, that's way too many cards for my brain to process. All right, we're gonna build a new constructor in the next video. This video is plenty long.